Okay, so I'm so happy that you're here with us, Sam. <laughs> Yay. Which is well, apparently we are now oh, live yeah. streaming on Facebook. We are? Yeah, can't see it yet here. Can't see it on the phone, but tells us or tell oh yes, we are, gosh, and we've already got somebody watching. Oh, we have somebody watching all the things that we're doing that are fun. Yeah. Crazy. Bear, with us. Us. Bear with us while we wipe our lipstick off, put our hair behind our ears and get started with that professional. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody, this is Lee Daniel, and I am so excited to have Sam Livermore with, um, with us today. Allison is here. Um, this is not legal advice, but this is certainly advice that you need if you're going through a divorce. If you've contemplated a divorce, if you are in the middle of it, if you finished it, if it's been 10 years ago, you still need to learn how to love yourself more. And I know that um, Allison works a lot with people on self-love. And Allison, can you just tell everybody who you are and then we'll go to Sam? Sure, sure. I am Allison Reiner and I am the Loved Again coach. And the, I, I work with uh, with relationships, so you know that's why Lee and I sort of connected, apart from the PPC aspect. But you know, I, I work with women who are unhappy in their marriages and are questioning whether they want to stay, whether they want to go. And my solution to that is do nothing until you have worked on your relationship with yourself, until you really, you know, you've got a really strong connection with yourself. For me, that's self love. Um, and I was thinking uh, over over the Christmas holiday, you know, self love, and it's so overused, but it's actually a spiritual practice. To love yourself allows other people to love you, and allows you to love other people. So you know, it's it's very very much part and parcel of what I do, what I teach people, and that's why I'm so excited about uh, having Sam here today because Sam has got a fantastic story about how she stumbled across self love and transformed her whole well-being um so over to you sam oh. <laughs> well, oh what a lovely introduction thanks um yeah i guess um self-love has has really changed my life over the last five years um so uh if you don't know a bit about my story if you haven't seen me before on ppc um my story um comes from Oh, quite a long, long time ago, but really the start of the real sort of self-love story is from 2012. So I've spent my whole life with an autoimmune uh, condition um, from childhood through teenage years, in my 20s, in my 30s. And at each stage, oh, some feedback there, right? Um, at each stage, um, I was, I was told it was something different. You know, as a child, it, it was one thing and I had surgery. As a teenager, oh, it was a reoccurrence with a different issue. I had surgery. Um, in my 20s, I had a different surgery on my knee. Um, and then in my 30s, actually, um, w was when it really, really struck me. Um, the, when I finally got a diagnosis of what the real issue was, an autoimmune condition called ankylosing spondylitis, which actually um, at the time, the medical world, so we were going back 20 years, the medical world was saying that this condition only affects men. Mm -hmm. um, um, when in effect, really, it, it affects maybe two thirds men, one third women. But because it affects women in a different way, they don't look for it. Um, in this particular um, instance with men it very very much affects the spine only but with women it affects your whole body so it affects like your whole body just like attacks itself um, so I spent like most of my 30s in a lot of pain and um, going for all sorts of treatment and uh, being on a lot of medication um, until eventually when I was 38, I got on a particular treatment um, called an anti-TNF therapy, which uh, changes the way your body responds to the disease, which then enabled me to be a little bit more active. Um, and because of that, I was able to start doing physiotherapy. Before that, I couldn't do it because I could barely move. 
Wow. So, yeah, I mean, you look at me now and you would never know that 10 years ago I was in that situation. I mean, and I was still going to work as well. I was doing a part time job in a school because that was the only thing that kept me sane. You know, I couldn't be one of these people who sat indoors all day and watched TV because I did that for a good seven years in my 20s. And actually, I became very, very depressed from it. No kidding. <laughs> right. You know, so um, I went to college for a couple of years and then I got a part time job. Um, but when I started going to physiotherapy, this is where my real sort of story of self-love starts. I was going to physiotherapy every week, a couple of times a week. Um, and one particular thing that I went to was a group physiotherapy. And actually, it's probably the worst thing you can do when you are trying to get better from a particular disease because you're in a group surrounded by all these other people with the same condition as you and everyone's really angry oh yeah <laughs> right. everyone's really angry about woe is me look at what's wrong with me I'm never going to get better I, what I noticed actually after after going for maybe two years everyone was really welling in the disease and not really mm. wanting to be better you know, and for me, that didn't make me feel good. Can I imagine? <laughs> right. You know, um, so what I actually started doing um, was leaving little notes in the waiting room because people were just like pissed off with each other and, 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 and life and every tiny little thing, you know, which it just made people really angry. Um, so... I started leaving notes in the, in the waiting room saying, um, have a great day, you know, like, I hope you have a good day or everything's going to be fine. Or if you find this note, you know, you are loved. Um, and we're just leaving them in the waiting room on the desk. Um, and I don't know if people pick them up. I don't know if the staff picked them up and threw them away. Um, I don't actually know what was happening with those notes when I was leaving them there. But for me, you know, I was thinking I, I've just got to inject some sort of like love with some of these people. Um, and then the notes turned into longer notes. Um, and then what I started doing after a few months is actually just writing like little letters um, along the same theme and then putting in an envelope and saying, open me. And I would leave them through the hospital. So as I walked from my car to to um to where the department was for the physio you had to walk down this very long corridor and even now when I go to this hospital twice a year just for a blood test I still feel that the the sense of doom in this corridor is a really mm. really long corridor um it's it's very dull it's not very well lit and it just makes you feel like so depressed when you walk down there and the energy of it you feel like you know you feel like you can sense the the death in the air it's one of those sort of corridors yeah. um so I started leaving the letters as I as I went along the corridor on, on the shelf or on the windowsill or whatever um and then on my way back to my car from the appointment these letters would always be gone so I knew, ah, yeah, people, I, I know these are not just being picked up by, you know, and thrown away. I know people are picking up these letters. Um, so, it, you know, it really filled me with a sense of excitement and joy that I'm going to, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm a secret squirrel. I'm leaving these like little love messages for people and no one knows it's me, you know. Um, I think I've been doing it for some months and this is where I had this big epiphany of, of how powerful this was. Um, I've been doing it for some months and I was writing a letter one day before going to the hospital and it was quite a long sort of letter and I really I wasn't even aware of what I was saying you know it was it, it was unconscious just coming out on a piece of paper um, and then when I read the letter back I realized oh my God, I'm writing to myself. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> and, and it was just like, oh, wow, you know, this is what I want someone to tell me. This is, and then I realized that all this time, you know, 
when I was writing these letters to other people, I was actually writing to me. Mm. You know, That's isn't beautiful. It? That and it, it just even that moment when I remember that moment of that epiphany, I still get that you know that's what it's all about really you know and that that letter I knew that if I felt it someone else felt it you know and then I realized that every time I'd written a letter to someone else I was writing it to me because we're a reflection of each other um and that's basically how the movement was born you know um so I carried on doing it and then I told my friend about it and then we had a few friends round and then I had a few more friends round and then we had like a coffee morning where we sat and wrote letters and went and left them in my local area. Um, And then we just got bigger and bigger and we started leaving them around all sorts of places in the shops, in the park, in the library, everywhere. Um, And from that, I mean, that was 2000. Yeah, 2012 from that sort of like moment. And now it's sort of birthed into a huge sort of movement where I've got uh, friends around the country doing it. We're going to events and festivals and getting everyone to realize that power of self-love because when you're giving to another, you're always giving to yourself. That's beautiful. So good. Yeah. So good. And it's so, it's so important um, when it comes to the areas of divorce and breaking up your marriage, because um, recently I have really been feeling this because I have some people that are actually close to me that are contemplating divorce. And, and so even though I do this every day, I'm seeing it through fresh eyes and, and I see the struggle that they have with making decisions that might hurt other people and having to choose between loving themselves and taking care of themselves and thinking about how they may impact everybody else. And what I say is that the most important thing for you to do is to love yourself enough to make hard decisions and to love yourself enough to know when it's time to change, when it's time to move on, you know, because I had a guy yesterday and, and, uh, he, he told me he'd been married 31 years and he's, he said that he met somebody new, he's in love and his eyes just shined, you know, he was just, they were just sparkly. And he said, I'm just getting chills. Cause he said, I never thought that anybody would ever love me. And and he said, I've been in an unhappy marriage for so, so long and nobody and, and nobody's ever said anything good to me. And I, it just broke my heart, you know, because people will stay and will and sacrifice because they don't. I, and I always, if, you know, and I know I'm, I'm rambling a little bit, but even when it's like domestic violence or even when, you know, they'll just stay, and I'll be like, you have to love yourself, you know. I mean, Allison, what do you, how does self-love play into what you tell people? I, of course, say, love yourself enough to leave. <laughs> yeah. I'm from back now. No, I'm just kidding. I say that. I love yourself enough to do the work. But something that, uh, that really, that struck me, I had a conversation with someone this morning and, uh, and it kind of brought into focus everything that I that I do and everything I believe in. And that's, you know, when you have, you, you see all these cases of um, emotional abuse or, you know, even physical abuse, domestic abuse, a lot of the time people settle because it's just not that bad. Yeah. Or they settle because they don't, you, you know, so I had a, a, somebody, um, a client this morning said, you know, she, her boyfriend had asked to move in with her. And her gut reaction was, mm, that's a bit fast and that doesn't seem, you know, I'm not really sure about that. But she went along with it because she felt that she should be flattered by, you know, she didn't feel that anybody else that she really, really, really would be in love with would do that for her. So she kind of went along that path. And, you know, so it's self-love is knowing that you deserve more, knowing that you deserve really what your heart desires it's not going to be easy to get it's not that you click your fingers and it all comes at you you need to put in the work 
And you need to kiss an awful lot of frogs sometimes before the, the prince does turn up. We need to make a hell of a lot of mistakes because that's that's where we learn, you know, that's where we learn, um, you know, what we really want and what's really important. But, you know, that's settling because it's just not bad enough or it's just, you know, we don't think we deserve any more. That's, and then identifying yourself. And that's something that you, you said right at the beginning, Sam, was, you know, these people turning out week in, week out with this, you know, with this debilitating illness. And of course, you know, we all understand why you would, you know, why you would feel depressed and why you would feel kind of hopeless when you have, you know, you know the disease that you went through. But look at you, you came out the other side because you took positive action. You know, people identify themselves with the problem. Who would I be if, you know, if I didn't have this? Mm-hmm. How you know? How do we get people to that to that stage? How do you you know? How do you step into that where you say you know? I don't want to be identified by the problem anymore. I want to be identified as the person who is living life to the full, is looking for a solution, is writing bloody love letters to myself and to anyone else that will listen to me. Yeah. And Sam, what do you have any ideas on? Because um, I know that you you know you started writing around the idea of illness and the depression that, and I get it. So I was just thinking, can I make my clients write these letters while they're here? You know, can I be like, you wait out in the, you wait out in the waiting room for a little while and write a letter for, and maybe, maybe write it to the next person. You know, and oh. like write it to yourself, say, write it to the next person who is going to come in here and face something different. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that I say when when we're doing these events, when people sit down and they love the idea of, oh, yeah, I'm going to write this letter. But then actually they come to it and they go, oh, like, how do I even do that? What do I even do? You know, so I just say to people, write write the letter that you would like to hear. You know, what do you think, you know, what, what would you like someone to say to you right now? Write that. Um, and that always pe- gets people to go oh okay and it, they're in that space of and when they're when they're in that position you know they're writing to someone else because they know how they're going to feel but they're also really they are writing to themselves you know yeah because that's the thing we all think that our feelings and our emotions are unique you know of course we're all unique but you know we, we think that somehow all we're flawed because we're feeling all these things mm. Everybody feels the same way. Yeah. Everybody needs to feel loved. Everybody needs to feel that somebody is thinking of them. Is yeah, you know, even if it's just a fleeting thought, it's it's lovely to know that somebody else has put you into their mind or kept you in mind just for a for a moment. And people will just stop allowing themselves to feel loved. You know, they they you know, and, and I, I understand what you're saying, Allison, on they need to do the work, but a lot of times when people come in to see me, they've already been in therapy for 10 years or, you know, I've been to five therapists or we've been to marriage counseling 10 times. We've separated three times. And at a certain point, you know, at a certain point, you have to realize that this is not going to get better. Mm. And, you know, you know, I'm not suggesting that on a whim, they get a divorce, you know, normally, especially in the long-term marriages, they really tried, you know, they've tried, they've, you know, they've tried, they've been, and it's, and also if you get to the point where you just are feeling, you know, hate, I think sometimes you need to get away from that situation. Now, maybe you can come back, but you don't need to, to sit in that where both of you just hate each other. Yeah, it's no. so poisonous to the children involved. It's, it's yeah, no, absolutely. No, certainly I, I don't, I would like everyone to find that happy place where they can find a solution in their own mind. Yes. You know, I, I am a realist. It's not always going to be the case. You know, 50% of my, my clients are with me to find the strength to leave. Because it's not as simple. I mean, you know you know better than anyone. It's not as simple as saying, uh, okay, okay, this isn't working anymore. Let's, you know, the easy option is divorce. It's not. The resilience, the emotional resilience you need to be able to keep everything moving forward as amicably as possible and keep, as you say, keep the children as safe as possible and make sure that you're, you're still creating that safe and loving atmosphere for them on both sides. That takes a lot of work. Yeah. And, and, you know, so no matter whether you're you're doing this this work, this this inner work, this self-love work to, to try and save your marriage or to try and extricate your from, yourself from it, 
it's you know it's almost a non-negotiable, especially if you then want to be able to go on and have a successful relationship afterwards, which is you know, right. which is what we're all here for. We all want to feel loved, and that's you know that tends to come with a, a romantic relationship. Not all the time, but you know that that tends to be society's view at least. I'm talking to two two women who are perfectly happy on their own. Yeah, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> what yeah. is she saying? Yeah. I, I love love. I love, I love love. You know, yeah. <laughs> Valentine's Day is coming up. Somebody send me some candy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I just I just want to like one of the things you said, Alison, when you were just talking about when you were saying like who would I be without this illness it's actually one of the questions that I was really asking myself as I got deeper and deeper into the self-love and then was realizing the impact of the letters on me um, I started to have a lot more awareness about myself you know because I was sort of I'd spent so many years being in so much pain like physical pain emotional pain not really feeling what I was feeling and covering it up with drugs and painkillers and all sorts of stuff so I was completely numb but as I started to feel my feelings and realizing what it was doing to me I started to ask myself the question who would I be without the pain yeah and, and I, I think that's the same exact yeah question, the same question we yeah. ask people that's a I'm so glad you said that when they're have been in a situation at least from my perspective for a long time and mm-hmm. they haven't felt love you know, what would you feel like if you didn't feel this either guilt because you're not good enough or get or shame because you're leaving the relationship or, you know, because a lot of times what happens, especially at the end, people start really blaming, you know, there's no more playing Mr. Nice Guy or Miss Nice Woman. It's, you know, these are all the things you did wrong. This is, you know, and and they have this enormous sense of guilt and shame. And I didn't I failed. You know, when when really if you're if you're trying to 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 be happy and to provide an option for your children to to start a new life, you didn't fail. You know, you didn't fail. Mm. You know, if you've really if you really tried and put your heart in it, then, you know, and, and other people can always find ways to blame you. You know, and I have some people that I have one client who constantly apologize, who constantly tells me. I wasn't a good guy. I was, you know, I didn't. And I'm like, give yourself a break. You know, everybody makes mistakes. You can't keep beating yourself up. And it's really hard. And I think that's why these letters are a beautiful idea. Mm. So how do you start, Sam? If we were going to write a letter today. Right. Well, if anybody's, you know, when the people are <laughs> yeah. watching, people, people are watching. watching, you know, get your pen and paper out. Well, um, I created the self-love letter challenge last year because I was thinking like, how can I bring this to people who I wouldn't see at events, you know, that wouldn't come across this in everyday life. So I created this five day challenge. And actually the, the first one that we do, like I bring people into it really, really easily is to start your letter saying dear you I just want you to I just want to remind you that and then I love it I'm gonna cry (laughs) and and then think of five things that you love about yourself or that you like about yourself if you feel that I don't love anything about myself five things that you like about yourself um and it's this is the thing I'm always really specific to people about five things about you like as you as a person not that you do for other people because we we can so easily come up with things like you know I love that I go and help that person over there or I love that you know I'm good at my job or you know where it's always us in relation to others if let's we give some do, examples give some examples so, of things you love about yourself and I've lost so, everything it's making me crazy okay <laughs> so for example you know I, I might say like I I love I love your shiny blue eyes, you know, I might say that. Or, you know, I love that that I have a quirk where I have one sometimes I have one green, one blue eye, you know, and I love that I have sometimes one weird green eye and one weird blue eye. <laughs> For me, I think that's quite quirky. So that's one thing that I would say about me, you know, or I love the way that I can laugh insanely at really stupid jokes you know so it's little things about you that 
that you that you like about yourself or you appreciate yourself and if you can come up with five things that you like about yourself you'll probably get more so if you go for five as a minimum you know so you just write your letter you know I want to remind you that share these five things and at the end you just say always remember I love you you know always sign it like I love you because when you start saying I love you to yourself you know it releases those if endorphins those really feel good endorphins in your body and that when you when you get those endorphins it releases that feel good effect which reduces the amount of cortisol in your body as we know the cortisol is the stress hormone so and if you're depressed or anxious you're going to have cortisol in your body in really really high amounts yeah yeah so and every time you say i love you it reduces that effect of the cortisol on your body. Ah, oh, I, I really love this. Yeah, I, well, I did. I think I did your second challenge, and I, I actually put yeah. them onto cards. I actually, so I wrote it out by hand, and then I, I went into Canva and I created little cards for myself that I dropped into my group. And I still do it every so often if I'm feeling particularly blah. I go and take one, and I'll drop it into my group, and oh, it lifts me up. But the, the response from it is uh, has always been fantastic. yeah, yeah, it's, it's powerful. I yeah. mean, I done it four. I done the challenge four times last year, and and actually the something so so simple that for five days we just write letters to ourselves and each day I would give people a different way of writing to themselves or a different approach of doing it so it just sort of you know mixes it up a little bit in your mind you know yeah. um, because it, it, it if you approach it as a task it, you, you, you're just going to avoid it you know um, right so and you have I'm sorry, and but you have also product that we can people can buy, right? I mean, you that you have some red. Tell people what you have because I'm just thinking I would really love to do this at my office, and you've already worked on a little. Oh yeah, well I have my I have my um, share the love postcards, um, which is postcards that I created last year to encourage people to write letters to other people. Um, and actually, the postcards have been designed all with quotes from love letters that have been written in the past. And I've taken quotes from them and designed them into the. So you can, you know, use those as like um, a little poster, a little reminder as yourself. But on the back, also, you can use them to write messages to other people and leave in places or send to someone in particular. You know? That's, that's and, and, right. Yeah. And they are beautiful postcards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they are um, for my um, foundation, which is share the love letters. So and that is something at the moment we are not not for profit. All the income that we get from these postcards basically just helps helps me run the um, run the movement to go around the country and leave these love letters. Can you bring some with and when we meet on Thursday? Yes, I can. Yes, I will do some. <laughs> okay, because I, I really think that would be great. And if somebody, if, if somebody is especially feeling pain and a lot of guilt, what can we? How can they start? Just you know, just start with this. I'm reminding you to love. Yeah, I always say that is the the first thing to start with. Is like I just want to remind you, and then write a couple of things about themselves and also to do uh, forgiveness around that so if they have any things that come up during that of, I don't want to say that to myself or you know um, or I feel really awkward saying that is to uh, do the Oponopono which is one of the tasks that we do when we do the love letter challenge you know is to do the I love you I'm sorry please forgive me thank you around that everybody thing. talks about that yeah, it's so, so powerful. And that's always one of the best days on the challenge is when people have, when they do the Oponopono in a love letter, because it really, it really, the power of self-forgiveness is incredible, actually. Say I mean, it again, Sam. It's, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. And it's, Yeah. It's powerful, especially when you're feeling in that moment not good enough about yourself. You know, saying that you love yourself and you forgive yourself is, yeah, it's a game changer, I think. 
Yeah, and Allison, you do a lot of work with self-love. What do you have people do to help them tap into self-love? In order to find um, find what self-love, because of course it means something different to everybody. You know, there's that sort of base idea behind it, but what it means to me, what's missing in my uh, relationship with myself is different to what's missing with for you. Right, right. So one of the things I, I get people to do is really to, to take a pen and a piece of paper and talk about the relationship they're in um, talk about what they're feeling about it, what's not working, what they feel is missing in the connection between them and the other person. And, and, and then expand on that. Take that, you know, I don't feel that he loves me. Well, what would be happening if he did love me? How, you know, how would he be treating me? How, you know, what would I be feeling? What would I be saying? How would we be connecting? And then, you know, take that on to, you know, yourself. Okay, so this is, in my words, this is what love is. If, I were to be loving myself, can I put my hand to my heart and say that I'm treating myself this way? Yeah. On a scale of one to ten, where do I think I fit in? You know, am I, you know, am I listening to myself? Am I treating myself tenderly? Am I cherishing myself? And the answer is no, because we're so busy, as as um, Sam said earlier, we're so busy thinking about other people and you know relating to the world and our happiness is all out there and what's happening and the people around us and the job we do and you know how fat or thin or whatever we are and how big our car is all that stuff is how we decide how happy we are but if you take it back and you look at it and you say okay this is this is what I think love is and and I'm not matching up to that what can I do what steps can I take to to begin that process for myself when you do it for yourself, it changes the way that people react to you and interact with you, because you, you know they, they yeah. see, they feel that difference in in you. You're suddenly you're much more confident in yourself. You're much more um, you, your self worth improves because you're actually taking time to nurture your relationship with yourself. Uh-huh. So for me, that's that's one of the the first places that I I get people to start is taking what is and the other thing, the other really important thing is you know we hear so much about not blaming the other person. We have to go through that period of blame. Right. Um, you know, that's not where we finish. That's not the, the end of the road, but it's a starting point to understand what it is we're feeling, what it is right. the behavior that's, that's upsetting us so that we can begin to make those changes in ourselves. So, you know, so for you're me, the reason why those people are blaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if they only get to step one. <laughs> But, you know, it's, I think it's it's so important because, I, you know, I felt so guilty for, for a long time feeling, you know, feeling anger or resentment against other people. I thought that was bad. So I just buried it down. It was only when I could I took it out and I looked at it and I understood what it was causing me personally that I could let it go and I could make different decisions. But whilst I'm, I'm not acknowledging it, all I'm doing is, you know, I'm not acknowledging reality. I'm not living in reality. And I would just run from people. You hurt me. I don't know how to deal with it. I'll right, push right. down and I'll run. And that's not, you know, we're here to, to connect with other people. We're here to be, you know, to be able to face up to these situations, to be able to look someone in the eye and say, do you know what? I'm hurt at that behavior. And if Fine. you can't do that, you, sure. if you can't do yeah. that, you're, you're, you're not really in a great place to, to hold a, a mature relationship and I say that as somebody that couldn't hold a mature relationship yeah and I, 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 running. <laughs> I think what I was what I'm what I'm saying is because yeah I agree you need to acknowledge these are the things that are not working these are the things that are hurting me but I think that when you when you are stuck in blame and I know you're not saying to stay there Absolutely. but what I see a lot is that people are not looking at themselves mm-hmm. and they're just like you're the reason this isn't yeah. working you know, and, and just blame, blame. And it's so easy just to say, we're getting a divorce because they're a son of a bitch, you know, or whatever, you know, she's a bitch and not looking at yourself. And not looking at the reason why they're behaving in the way they're behaving, because nine times out of 10, they are, they're behaving in that way because of the way that you're presenting in the, the relationship. The because dynamic, the center, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, we, we all turn up, you know, with, with our own ideas on what a relationship should look like. And again, the, uh, the woman I spoke to this morning, you know, had a very clear idea on how she thought a relationship should unfold. And it wasn't unfolding like that. So she was, you know, she was already pushing and pushing and pushing this guy to get something different out of it. 
of course, what was he doing? He was in complete defense. If he was, yeah, wait, wait a minute, you know, you're pushing me too far and too fast. So, you know, when you realize that actually it's your own set of beliefs, your own um, view of the world or view of marriage or long-term relationship that's causing this um, this bad dynamic, if you like. Because a lot of the times when we talk about emotional abuse, it's actually just no more than that, a bad dynamic. Both of you have turned up with your own beliefs, your own parental, you know, me, I was passive aggressive. I didn't know any other way. If I'm upset, that's that's the only tool that I had in order to, to make you understand that I was hurt, I was upset. I didn't know how to say, I'm hurt and upset. It seems yeah. stupid, doesn't it? It seems really stupid. But I didn't have that ability. But I could tell you, you know, in a, a million different ways, and I could sulk for days, because that's what I was brought up to believe was you know, was how you argued in marriage. So yeah, I think yeah, once we, once you understand that it's not about it's not about self loathing, it's not about saying, Oh, you know, I'm a bad person because I act like this or I behave mm-hmm. like this. It's about taking responsibility, saying, Well, you know, that's what I've always believed. Question it now. Is that mm-hmm. you know, is that serving me? Is it making me happy? Because it's never about the other person. It's about, you know, am I happy in this? Right. You know, what this is causing me pain. If I continue to believe that this is the way it should be, then I'm the only one that's going to get hurt. Maybe not the only one, but I am definitely going to be hurt by it. And how, so so these people, whatever they are, if they're married, working it out, or getting divorced, and starting this, how did sharing the love letters, how did it help you in the long run, Sam? Well, I think it just really changed my life in relation to everybody, to everything I did, the what I did for a job, you know, for how I treated myself, you know. When I realized like the impact of the of the self-love and when I started to become aware of myself and who I was, you know, and remembering who I was, you know, I started to realize there's a lot of things in my life that I don't really like doing. <laughs> Um, that I'm doing just because I've always done them and I have friends because they've always been friends even if they're not treating me very well or if they're not caring about me so I started to realize no this you know I love myself enough actually not to be in touch with that person and I cut a lot of friendships out of my life of people that we have mutual friends and so I was staying friends with them just because we'd known each other for 20 years or whatever you know so I disconnected from that and then I changed re- the relationship that I had with food as well mm. because for me food was just something that I ate to you know because I had to eat food to live <laughs> And I had actually a really bad relationship with food, which you wouldn't guess because I'm so skinny and I always have been my whole life. Uh, I ate a lot of cake. I love cake. Right. I'm really jealous of that. I I love cake. I love cake, but I loved cake too much. And I realized that that I, I had this moment one afternoon where I realized, oh, my God, I'm just eating cake because I can not because I actually want a piece of cake. I was eating it just because I could. And I, I hope I don't have to go get some cake right now at like, <laughs> right. like 7.45. Yeah. And, I may. That's not a good way to start the day. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and, and I realized, wow, you know, this, yeah, I love myself enough not to. Not, not to have cake. Not, not to eat cake for four or five times a day. I was eating like a lot of cake. <laughs> 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 And I realized, actually, I had quite an addiction to sugar. And Mm. I think it was the sugar because that was another thing that makes you feel better about yourself. Um, So it was letting go of so many different aspects of of my life and and realizing, actually, I was in a job that I didn't particularly care for. (laughs) Um, The actual job, you know, working with the children was amazing. But the actual environment that I was in and the management, were actually not very nice and your health improves you know exactly and everything every step sort of further I took into self-love and realizing who I was in relation to the outside world and letting go of that 
was another big leap forward in in my health improving because I wasn't in a constant I wasn't in a constant fight or flight I wasn't in a constant you know my adrenaline's like really high and all that cortisol and when you when you have this autoimmune condition your cortisol is very very high naturally Mm. because your body's constantly fighting against itself so every time you let go of that and love yourself enough it brings that down and and my health would just like but what was it the doctors told you (laughs) well yeah interestingly the doctors um I think two two years ago, two two and a half years ago, and actually that particular consultant is now retired, um, and I'd been seeing him since my mid twenties. You know, I'd been seeing him for a good twenty years, and two and a half years ago, when I had the first set of blood tests that had dropped considerably, um, he was like, oh, "When did you have these blood tests?" And I was like, oh, "Just last week," and he was like, "Huh." they look like they're normal and he he was very confused (laughs) and I was like normal and he was like yeah normal normal and I was like oh okay and he was like what what on earth are you doing I didn't want to tell him I'm writing love letters to people around the (laughs) hospital because you're gonna think I'm a crazy person (laughs) you know um so I just said to him you know I've just sort of like changed my life over the last couple of years you know I've changed my diet. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. You know, I'm, I'm exercising. I'm doing, and I just went through all of the things that have come out as a result of writing the love letter. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I'd stopped doing was stopped going to this physio group <laughs> with was, all the depressing people. <laughs> with all the depressing people, and he actually said, "Oh, I see you haven't been to the group for over a year." And I was like, yeah, why would I travel yeah. 30 minutes to sit in a room with a load of people complaining about how ill they are? I can do that exercise at home for free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, oh, <laughs> you know, and I said, for me, I can see that the impact of positive thinking is really, really important on my body, right. you know, and if I'm going to exercise with people moaning around me, that I'm absorbing that in my body right, right you know and he just looked at me really strangely and uh he just said well I'm so glad it's working for you <laughs> and that was his yeah yeah okay you're and, just, it, and, and you know what it doesn't matter yeah the bottom line is it doesn't matter why it doesn't yeah. matter how it just matters that it works it exactly works. It, I mean, you it just know. works I can't give you, you know, it sounds like you have an idea a little bit behind the lowering the cortisol and how it works on your body. I don't know any of the science. I just know that self-love works. And yeah, exactly. so um, it's about time for us to go. So I just want to thank you so much, Sam. Can you tell everybody where they can find you? I'm really glad we had this talk about Oh, love. yes. Yeah, so um, I've got a Facebook group called The Path to Self-Love. You can search The Path to Self-Love. It will come up. Um, and you can also find more about my love letters at sharetheloveletters.com and um, the work that I'm doing around self-love and EFT. You can find out more about that at samlivermore.com. Are you running another challenge soon? I am running another challenge soon. Tell us. <laughs> yes. The next challenge starts on the 5th of February and there's no sign up link for it yet. But if you jump into my Facebook group, The Path to Self Love, which is where it all takes place, um, you will get the uh, link and the sign up as soon as it goes live next week sometime. Well, Alison, tell everybody where they can find you. Well, you can find me in my Facebook group, which is Loved Again and Forever, um, or on my website, alisonreiner.com. Um, or if you wish to, to send me a, a message, alison at alisonreiner.com is where you can email me. Or, of course, you can find any of us on Project Positive Change, hanging around like bad smells. <laughs> yes. What? Bad <laughs> smells. What? Hanging around like bad smells. She didn't mean that. She didn't mean that. I don't know what she's saying. But anyway, um, thanks, everybody. And you guys have a wonderful day. And I'm super excited about this new love, Share the Love project I'm going to do here. Yay. All right. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks, Thanks, Sam. Bye. Bye.